Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I am a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. The journey continues today on May 26, 2021 at roughly 8.26 a.m. PST. Now, it keeps starting it that way and I'm not entirely certain why. Filler or something like that, I don't know. Anyway, I've started this off and I figured I might just as well do this. As I said, I am going to be making headway with it. Okay, so I'll probably get to more today, but I'll certainly have more of it done before tomorrow. Because as you can see, there's parts that are not painted yet. Now, I am not a great painter by any functional stretch. But what I do, what I have found is by putting things on a list. Okay, and you know, you, you list them out as best you can. It works great if you actually do them. Okay, so this, this is simply a way of getting your life organized because the reality is if your world is running more smoothly, then you'll have more tolerance for the people away from your world. Okay, and net result, you'll treat them better. They in turn will go home feeling a little better about, about what their day has been going like. And net result, treat the people at home a little better. You can see how this is going to be a chain reaction. Because, the re you know, when you look at it, when we each treat each other decently, the world is a happier place. There's a lot less stress involved. Okay, but it is up to you whether or not you do something with it. Okay, it's up to you to make the changes. You can ask for all the guidance in the world. It won't matter if you don't do anything. You know, from my standpoint, it really boils down to an issue of get straight what, I, what I'm looking at. Where it comes to the writing, that's been going really well. I am very far ahead of myself, and yet, I cannot afford to, to lose focus on what I'm aiming for. Because if I do, as I mentioned the other day, yes, when the inheritance came through, I managed to get most of it put away in, in, a, retire, in a retirement fund. So that I can actually take care of myself as I get older. But I didn't change the way that I was thinking about money. Or about the material world. And that has created its own problem. Which is a thing that this month I'm working on really strongly. You know, I've got to go through finances today. As a matter of fact, I should mark that down. Because it's not on my list yet. I've got to go through finances today and find out where I'm standing. See if I've managed to get to the goal that I'm aiming for. Which should be pretty close. Should be very close to what I'm aiming for. And I've still got one more paycheck coming in, in in a week. So am I likely to make my goal? The answer is yes. When you take a look at the world you're living in. The world that your that is your house or your primary location. Whether it's your home or maybe you spend more time at the office or in your office. Than you do anywhere else. In my case, that's very much the case. Okay, I work from home, but the majority of my time is spent in my office. Okay, I do make a point of getting out of it periodically, but that has something to do with having a 15-year-old son. My apologies, 16-year-old son. Okay, the other thing to remember here is these recordings are live, meaning I record them right from start to finish, when I'm done, I just simply double check to make sure I got the date right. And if if I if I miss the date, then I'll go back over and do an entire new video, and you'll never see this one. Okay, but I've only done it once, I think, where I actually missed the date and had to redo it. There's been a couple of days that I've missed, but understand, I only I only promote three laws. Okay, all of them karmic. Be true to yourself first. Meaning, if it doesn't feel right to you, okay, then you might want a second want to take a second look at what you're looking at doing. Second one, do unto others as you desire them to do unto you. Treat people the way you personally desire to be treated. If you're selling something, put it at a price that you would be willing to pay. Okay, if you're promoting something, make sure you believe in what you're promoting. 
Okay, and the third one is energy out, energy in. Meaning, whatever you put your effort into, that is what you're going to get. That's what, you, that's what you're stacking the deck in favor of getting. It doesn't mean you'll definitely get it, because there's a lot of other variables involved that other people have control over. Now, when we talk about the, the whole concept of spiritual guidance and the whole nine yards, because... I have, you know, people have said, you know, have asked what I do for a living. Well, I've always billed myself as a spiritual guide. Because of the industry, I am classified as, an, as a psychic. Okay. Frankly, don't kid yourself. Where it comes to psychic work, and I, I get in trouble for this from other psychics. 80 to 85% of what we sense, frankly... Right, and I can only speak for me in all in all fairness, but I've been doing this for what forty forty eight years now. Okay, and what I've seen is that eighty to eighty five percent of what people pick up can be chalked up to common sense and life experience. Now, this does not mean that it doesn't work. Okay, I've had enough experiences and enough success in various different fields. To know that you can't chalk certain things up to common sense. Okay. Like for instance. There was one case that I had. Where I told somebody exactly where their, where their passport was. And you just couldn't guess where it was. It's just the functional possibilities are, are infallible. Or are incalculable in my eyes. But. When you start looking at people on the whole. Every single one of you is in, in precisely the same position today. Regardless of how you got to where you are, the thing that you're all in the same position of, and so am I, we are all in exactly the same position. We are at the point in our life where we are currently. Right now, you're where you are. You cannot change the negative past, or the positive past for that matter. The past is written, you're stuck with it. Well, that worked well. You know, the, the past is, is written. You're stuck with it. So what you have to look at is the future, which is not written. You've got all kinds of options as to what you can do to make it bad, to make it better for you in your eyes. Okay, but we are all starting exactly where we are. Okay, that's the first thing that everybody has in common. Okay, the second thing is that everybody, sooner or later, because of the way the world is, okay, the human body will break down the corporeal form in, in pretty much every form we know, that I know of, does eventually break down. But, there's no reason that you have, there's no functional reason that you have to maintain this idea that as you get older, you're going to get, you're going to get sicker, your eyesight is going to collapse, and your memory is going to go out the window. I was lucky my memory went out the window a long time ago. <clears throat> but you know, it's not bad when you lose your mind, you don't you don't really miss it in certain cases. But take a look at the way that your world is. I've got this neat little list here. Okay. And yes, I brought it up a number of times and I will continue probably to bring it to bring it up because what it tells me like, this list has been working very well for me to stay organized, for me to get ahead. Okay. Except I keep losing what I deal with my pen. Okay, now, the neat part about it, as far as, as far as the list goes, is if you keep things down to a minimum, like down to 15-minute to half-hour jobs, you can get a fair, a fair amount accomplished. And... We did not write any count that out, but we really should. So we're going to do that right this second. Now, considering the fact that yesterday we managed to get, um, we got, we did 13 jobs yesterday. Now, understand, one of those jobs was that we were doing editing on our, on the second, on the sequel to the birth of the wolf pack. Now, I sent a goal of five pages per week, which would have put it, you know, five pages per week, 
puts it five months down the road by the time I get it finished, which is a lot of leeway, especially when you think yesterday I did almost 40 pages. Okay, and the day before that, I did almost 30. Today, I will probably get another 20 or 30 done. Okay, and the idea for it is very simple. I go through it, I deal with it. This way, when it gets finished, because between it and then getting the proofreading done, I should be way ahead of schedule and I'll be able to put it to print as soon as it gets, as soon as it gets finished. Okay, that said, once I'm finished writing the, the end of an epic, I'm already set to carry on writing the writing Return to Paradise, which will be the third book in the trilogy. And again, I'm not I'm not perfect. I'm not telling you how you have to do things. I'm just telling you what I've done to make these things happen. This was a goal that I had back in grade 10 and life got in the way and everything got put on hold, etc., etc. However, I've now got it focused on that point as well as a number of other things. Okay, now, where it comes to dealing with people, okay, we correct our own little world, and like I said, what'll happen is you'll deal with the outside world a little better, you know, a little better in your eyes where you're not as stressed. In turn, you treat the other people decently, they will get to go home with a better day at work. Net result, they take that positive energy back home they have a better time at home, and the people at home turn around and go out and have a better time in the world. You see how this becomes a cascade success? Okay, it has a very definitive ripple effect. You know, and this is why we ask for a, for a thumbs up on the video. If you like the videos we're doing, definitely give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and spread the message to everybody that together, working together, regardless of where you come from, regardless of any of the, of the differences, okay, if we work together, or more to the point when, we can make this world a whole lot more enjoyable, a whole lot less stressful, and a whole lot more prosperous for everybody. Because understand, I, like, I remember, I remember a, a long time ago, now, I've got memories that date back into past lives, you don't have to believe in them, okay? If you want to call it your imagination, knock yourself out, okay? But ask yourself this, just as an individual, if you're doing a job, are you more likely to do the job well if somebody's screaming at you or beating you? Or are you more likely to do it well and put, the, and put proper effort into it if you're being told when you're legitimately doing a job right, and if you're being paid enough that you can actually survive. So many jobs out there, people get underpaid, and the boss goes, I don't want you working for anybody else, but I'm not going to pay you enough to live. And then they sit there going, I can't understand why I can't keep an employee. Well, the reason you don't keep an employee is they can't afford to stay with you. If you're looking at at paying your employees so they stick around. Okay, now yeah, there's all sorts of ways you can talk about inflation and what have you, but here's the reality. If you don't pay your staff enough that they can survive on their own, and I'll speak directly to the people that, that have tips that come in. If you as an employer are paying your staff and relying on them making tips for them to be able to survive, instead of paying them enough to survive and having the tips gravy. Okay, if you're, if you're forcing them to rely on tips to survive, they're not going to be focusing on whether they're doing what you want done properly. They are going to be focusing on where can I get a job where I don't have to make certain, regardless of how I'm feeling, that I can survive. Okay. Take a look at the wages that you're paying. Now, I basically, that when I look at, at wages, especially if I'm dealing with another company, I go, okay, how much does it cost? What's it going to run? It costs to run the, to run the house, to run a, a, the average household. And I don't mean being able to fly to Tahiti every, every other day or every other week. 
if you've got a business and you're prime, and you're prosperous enough that you can take holidays and fly all over the place, that does not mean it's your responsibility to make sure your employees have enough money or paid enough that they can do the same thing. But it is your responsibility to make sure you pay them enough that they can afford to keep a roof over their head. You know, keep a roof over their head, keep their utilities paid, keep their their insurance on their vehicle, especially if you are employing people to drive. If you're not paying them enough that they can afford out of the paycheck to pay their transportation, there's a problem with your pay scale. Okay, so make sure that you're paying the people. I like the way it's it's put in one book. An honest day's pay for an honest day's work. If you pay people, if you take whatever it costs for to to run a, a, the average household in your area, divide that by by twenty two, which is the average number of work days in a given month. Divide that by twenty two, and divide and then divide it by the hourly wage you're paying. I think it did that right. Might have done that wrong. Take the. We're going to try that again. Take the amount your that it costs to to run the average household in your home, in your area. Divide that by 22, which is the average number of days when you take the weekends off, when you take statutory holidays off. You've got 22 days in which to earn that. Okay, that's how much money the person has to be making a day. So divide that by the hourly wage that you're paying them and you'll find, you'll be able to tell, are you paying them enough to live? This is not counting and counting tips. Okay, personally, if a, if a, come, if a store, or if a restaurant is saying, we're adding 15% to this bill for tips, we'll go in there once. Okay, if we find out in there that this is what happens, we'll never go back in the store. Because frankly, the wage is what the what the employee should be living on, and that should be paid by the man by the company. Now again, that's my personal opinion. Okay, in all fairness, everything I'm repeating that I'm reciting here is personal opinion. I don't have a degree in anything. Except the school of hard knocks, possibly, knocks part, possibly. But when you start looking at the way the world is, okay, if you're treating people the way you desire to be treated, if you're paying them in a wage that that you would accept as pay, okay, that you would feel good about, and feel that you would do a good job by by being paid that, okay, then this is fantastic. However, if you're underpaying your staff, you can bet your bottom dollar they will look for somewhere else. And yeah, there are a number of people out there that will go, I can't get another job, I don't have the education. Rest assured, it does not take an education. It takes brains and it takes a lot of work, but it does not take a high education to go to work in a restaurant. You know, as a dishwasher, as a, as a waitress, waiter, whichever. Working fast food is not it does not require a degree. It requires integrity as in you have to get up and do the job. But there are very few jobs out there that are unattainable without an education. Thankfully, you have to have an education to become a doctor. Because Lord knows, as much as I question a lot of what people come up with, I would rather somebody trained in anatomy had operated on my, on my arm when I broke it than have a backyard, a backyard mechanic try and put it back together. Okay. The other thing we have to look at, that's on the business side. The other thing to look at is this. Absolutely go out and find a, a spiritual group that you can connect with. A church, a temple, a coven, you know, a group of like-minded individuals on the internet. Okay, the fact is, people require social interaction. It's absolutely imperative. Okay, 
So with that in mind, you know, just pick pick the people you're going to follow carefully and be aware. If they're talking about fear this, that, and the other thing, you're probably following the wrong people. Because the reality is fear is a lousy motivator. It will get people doing things, but it does not work as well as you might think. Okay, the biggest problem you run into is, or the biggest decision to make is, is that spiritual person, is that is that church, is that temple, is that coven, putting you in touch with people that have a similar outlook on life to what you have. Or, is, or and by all means, if you don't know for certain, connect with them for a little bit, give it a little bit of, of, a time, of time. Don't take my word for it. Go out and do this. And the reason I am now sending people, because I'm, I'm hearing that fewer and fewer people are finding a spiritual path. They are digging so much into the money side of things, into the fear base, that this world is collapsing. And don't believe me? Take a look out your window. Okay, go ahead. Look at the people around you and see how many actually get along. Most of the mainstream religions right now talk about fearing this, that, and the other thing, even with the so-called New Age, the Wiccans, the, you know, the Druids, the witches, they talk about looking at the other religions going, those are wrong. And I'm telling you, you know, from everything I've seen, you're all teaching essentially the same thing. So you're putting different words, you call it different names, but you're all teaching the same thing. Take a look at the list of, of guidelines for for the different mainstream religions and the and the secondaries, you know, the the so-called fringe element, even the rules around your own home and your own office. Look at those rules. And you'll find that they all, number one, where it comes to the religious, to the spiritual side, they all teach essentially the same thing. Okay. I've actually put together a, a list of the different guidelines, I think from seven or eight different religions, different guides, aka Christianity, Judaism, the Church of Satan, Muslim, um, Buddha, Cree, uh, Wiccan. Okay, well, that's eight anyway. Okay, right off the top I can think of. Okay, and of course... Harry Krishna, which I think that's just called Krishna. I'm not entirely certain. I am not a I am not a researcher. I just looked these up because of curiosity, and I because I kept watching the same types of responses from various different walks of life. Look it up yourself. You'll find that the different doctrine and that the different different religions, the different spirituality. Now there's an idea think that's what I'm going to do, is I will turn around and find the document I've got and post that for you to take a look at. Um, post the list of similarities. You know, I'll do it in point form, okay, of what I have come across. And just compare them and see how much different they, how similar they really are. Just making a note for myself here to make sure I do it. Now, I am getting down to the edge here, and since I've got other things I've got to get done, and I always keep this down to a down to a 30-minute run anyway. And again, you know, if you've got questions in any field, okay, if I don't understand the field, I'll let you know. But I've been dealing with people's personal life and professional life, as well as alien technologies, abductions, spirit work, mediumship. You name the field, I've probably got my fingers into it. But then my life is more like science fiction than it is reality. If you look at the bottom of the video, of the video, you'll find a list of ways of contacting me. Reach out on any one of them if you've got a question, if you've got a field of, of curiosity that you'd like a little more information on. Understand, I do not research. Okay, which means the information I've got comes from personal experience. Since I've been doing this work since I was 10 years old, that puts me with, right now, 48 years of experience. That's where I draw my information from. 
Okay, so I may not have all the all the newest statistics. My statistics, my outlook is based on what I've personally seen, not based on what some other agency, when be it professional, business, or government, it's not what anybody else has posted. It's what I've seen. Okay, and the experience I've personally had. But drop me a line. You'll also find a list of various booklets or books that I've already got in publication that right now can only be ordered through me. They're also listed below this video. Okay, I do encourage you to look back over a prior set of videos I did that is subtitled in the subtitled language. Because in it, I cover a number of languages, a number of words in the spoken language in any language that are self-limiting. Take a look at them and find out why they are self-limiting and what words work in comparison to counterbalance them. Also, on the first Friday of every month, which actually I think will be next Friday, I think. It's got to be next Friday. Just double checking to make sure. Yes, next Friday, I'll be on the internet at spacedoutradio.com talking about aliens and alien technology. If you go into one of the many chat rooms that you can find, it's R. Keith Andrews and the ET Connection. If you go into one of the chat rooms, you can put your questions in capitals, and I will do my best to get into, to deal with them, okay, to respond to them. Otherwise, drop me a line below. And until we talk again, which, by the way, will be tomorrow, until we talk again, take care of yourselves and each other. And for pity's sakes, stay positive.